Um. Okay. What's up, everybody? Sparrow with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Space Engineers. Uh, when we left off in the last episode, we worked on this little guy over here, the conveyor arm, with marginal success, but it didn't really go the way that I wanted it to. Uh, mainly because I couldn't get the height quite right, and so yeah, there was a bit of an issue there and stuff like that. So I wanted to try and kind of alter this slightly. Um, I think I actually broke it down last episode and dismantled it, but then I don't think I saved it now that I think about it, because this wasn't, I don't think this was here. Um, but I got a couple of ideas from the comments that I want to try. One thing that I was very surprised about is um, I had a couple suggestions about using frames to kind of do the in-between. Um, but it doesn't seem like there's a large frame for those, which I'm super shocked about because I don't think I've ever seen anything that wasn't available on small ships, kind of, I mean, that uh, was available on um, small and not large ships. So that's really weird that of all the places, the conveyor's not actually... I mean, the frame isn't actually available on a uh, large grid. Really odd. I thought at first it was just me, but then I got looking at it. I'm like, no, it's 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 there. Um, but I did think of something that I wanted to try, and we're gonna do that really quick to see if I'm right. Um, actually, if I'll be able. Well, let's just go ahead and break this one down. At least of the tubes there. Because what I want to try is after doing some of the stuff in the reverse engineers type stuff, um, I think the the size of the small but advanced rotor head is the same as um, as the large one. So I want to try something. So if we add the smaller head, now it obviously looks like that. But now, what I'm thinking is doing... Where did it go? Now we could do frames if we needed to adjust the height. That's kind of my thought process. So I think we're going to try and do that and see what happens. Hopefully this will work a little bit better. Um, it'll also cut down on the overall costs. However... Whoop! Oh, that's right. I forgot about this guy down here. I think I did the same exact thing in the last episode, actually. Um, now, as far as this goes, I might just leave it. I was going to do either like a piston or something like that, but if we can get the frame to, to work right, it may not be an issue because we could just do one frame and then do our elbow kind of thing. Actually, let's go ahead and rotate this. Uh, because that way I'll be able to work with the height directly. Um, so yeah, technically it'll be a small grid, but if we're using the larger conveyor tubes, I don't think that's a problem. Actually, it should make it cheaper, if memory serves. The scuttler marks out. I don't think I've seen that one. I did also remove the voxel... Uh, mod that I had in just because I wanted to see if it would affect the uh, frame rate at all. I don't know if it was or not. I'm seeing kind of mixed numbers. One minute it's, you know, in the upper 40s, one minute it's in the lower 50s. So I'm not really sure if it's making that much of a difference. You guys will have to let me know what you see on your end. Um, but yeah. So I think I'm going to tinker with this for a minute and see if I can use the um, small grid head and then do like one frame and then bring it over and see if that's low enough to get the connector to see it. Okay, so good news and bad news. Good news is this does actually work fairly well at getting it uh, a little bit closer. 
The bad news is I'm not sure it'll still line up without doing some kind of piston type thing. So I may have to remove this and put like a piston there. The only thing is if I do that, I think this is a little too tall anyway. It'll end up being... Oh, come on. Stupid collision boxes. Um, so they are two blocks plus extension. So there wouldn't really be much room for the rotor. It would be a much taller and then have to come further down. And unless it goes lower than this level right there, I don't really think that'll help. I need it to be like down on this height to where it can go up and then kind of like come... Uh, it can it can be sitting like this, and then the piston can pull it further down. But uh, I also removed the frame because with this smaller grid, it seems to be much closer to um, to the actual height that I need anyway. And I couldn't put a frame over on this side. Well, I probably could, um, but I had to bring it over here at least. So I'm gonna weld all this up and then see if it'll work. Alrighty, so moment of truth. I went ahead and saved it. Uh, we'll see. I'm not really sure because of the snapping mechanic of the connectors if this is going to work at all. Okay, so it's kind of there. Will, this, will it let me lock it? If it will, that'll... Actually, I need to... All right, so what do I need? I need... We've got the rotation. I need the switch lock and maybe the on and off function. Let me rename it first. So we have uh, docking arm. Let's just copy that and then go to connector. Um, I'm guessing it's going to be this since it's on a subgrid, maybe? Let's just turn that off and see. Yep. Wait. Is red off? Or is that the Yeah, red's off. I think. Maybe. We're gonna we're gonna go with it. <clears throat> I have no idea. Um, turn it back on and let's do connector. And we don't have a group, but that's okay. I, I was thinking I had a group for it. Um so let's grab this and we'll do the toggle block on and off just in case we need to uh, get rid of the... Perfect! That works! Cool! So, with that in mind, I should now have access... Okay, uh... <laughs> which one is which? I think this is going to be the other ship. And this is going to be the current one, I think. For, uh, they're the same size, they're on the same grid. So, uh, yeah, I'm thinking all the green is going to be the other ship. Can I? No, I can't shift click it in, can I? Wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> that's only from the same thing. I can't shift click it. Oh, that's so much faster. Oh my gosh, we're going to have all of our stuff in one place in no time. This is amazing. Except for that, which is... Okay, I might have a separate container for ice, apparently. That's so cool. So, let's double check real quick and make sure that our Sky Factory is now pretty much empty. Uh, so we've got our cargo containers here. That's all the drones. Oh, let's disconnect it first. Actually, that'll make things easier. Then it'll only have its inventory. So we should be able to switch lock, turn that off, rotate it out. Awesome! It actually works. I'm impressed with myself. Um, Alright, so yeah, pretty much everything. The parachute hatch, eh, that's fine. Gatling guns, we can leave that. All of them are empty. Ooh, our assemblers we didn't empty out, though. That I probably want to grab. Uh, interior turrets are fine. Reactors, yeah, we'll leave that. 
I left some ice in here because I know it uh, is required for some of the hydrogen stuff. Um, and I don't know if this one has as many tanks on it as much as it just generates. So yeah, we completely cleaned it out in like a matter of minutes. That's awesome. Um, I am going to clear out the assemblers though. I forgot about those. So yeah, that works really well, at least for this ship. Um, this was kind of built specifically for that ship, but um, if it ever came back you know, you ever needed something similar, it is very doable to, to do something similar to that. Um, let's just go directly into the assemblers and refineries. Can we do that? Alright, there's those. Sweet. Awesome. Um, now refineries? Do they have anything in them? Okay, those are... Alright, the, the Sky Factory doesn't have anything cool. So... Unlock. Turn off. And the turn off part isn't really necessary. It doesn't seem to be gripping the other connector too badly. Um, but I kind of wanted that in there just because I personally don't like dealing with the connectors and their weird, like stickiness kind of thing like they kind of um, have like a suction to them um, so I prefer just being able to disable them manually before trying to move so that you know you don't have to try and get enough of the thrust or something to or or torque to get it to move um, actually with that in mind I don't even think this connector down here is really even necessary anymore because I was designing that kind of to do what this is doing where it was to um, to unload. I think the next step is I think I'm gonna try and build a um, a fighter I think that might be my next step but I'll probably wait till the the morning time. Alrighty so um, I decided to start planning out kind of and by the way I don't know what that sound is in the background. All I know is I flew over that way direction and picked up one of those unknown signal sources. It's been making that sound ever since, so kind of sounds like something's being manufactured in the background. I don't know what that's for. Um, I'll probably have to try and like reload it and see if that fixes it at some point if it doesn't go away on its own. How are our, okay, our batteries are dead. That's not promising. Might be because I have the other one set to recharge and they're pulling the power? I don't know. Anyways, um, so I've set up kind of my starting point here for a small, small grid ship. And I'm gonna use heavy armor, I think, because it's supposed to be a fighter. And as such, we want it to be able to take a hit. Um, since I don't have the, like, shield mods and stuff like that going on. Um, I may have to reload it just to get that sound to go away. Um... Okay? That... That was new? What the heck was that about? Why is it shooting up the ship over here? It's been here for like weeks. <laughs> um Okay. Okay. That doesn't make any sense, but whatever. At least the sound's gone. Ah, <sighs> you got to love this game sometimes. Um but no, so uh so I'm starting off with the... I definitely want to use heavy armor. Um, just because I want it to have a little bit more uh, punch to it. And although the metal grids are a little pricey, I actually have a pretty good stockpile of steel. So I'm not too, too worried about doing it that way. Um, for now, though, let's actually just build it up a ways so that we have some height to work with in case we want to 
build underneath it or something like that. That's a mistake that I've made in the past, and I'm going to try my best not to make it anymore. Um, so, the first thing that I want to get figured out is kind of... This is definitely going to be an eco build, as in not really the prettiest looking ship in the world, but just kind of a it'll work kind of thing. Um, so starting off, I like to base my ships around, um, and in this case the large, the large container is probably a bit too large. Um, I like to base my ships around the cargo containers, at least when I'm doing these like efficient type builds. Um, so, and I definitely need some kind of storage for, uh, for the ship in order to, um, be able to hold the missiles and things like that. Now, I did just think about it, and I forgot that the small grids don't have the all the way around conveyor ports on the conveyor junctions, which kind of sucks, honestly, because I would like to have like one going into the container, but then having two turrets on each side and one on the top and bottom, and I can't really do that because the side ports are going to end up being these smaller containers. Though, I could use... Oh, no, I have an idea, actually. I have ideas. This, this could happen. This could work. So we're going to place a container there, and I'm going to do... Yeah, that's right. I'm going to do a junction here. Now what that does is it puts the small um, ports over here. We can use this for either the um, Gatling turrets or the Gatling chain guns because they use small, con uh, small conveyor ports. And as for the large, I don't know what... I don't know if there's a big, big difference between... Um, other than they're huge, but in terms of parts between the uh, missile launchers and the turrets. So we have a total of 10 steel, and these are 8. Okay. There's no interior plates. These have 10. 2 to 12 computers. 4 to 8 motors. We have... Wow, these actually have eight large steel tubes. These only have two. Ten metal grids, two metal grids, 30 construction components, 25... Oh, there are interior plates. These actually seem like they're more expensive than doing turrets, which are automated. And I find that to be odd. Because, well, they're automated. You don't have to do as much with them. So why would the ones that you can aim... I mean, that you have to aim, rather. Why would those that way. Um, so what I just did there was I made a change of plan here. I actually want the missile turrets to be on the sides because then it'll actually hit with both turrets type of thing. Whereas if they're on the bottom and I'm flying straight, you're only going to get the, um, the top or the bottom one firing, but not both. I'd have to turn it in a weird... I'd have to turn the ship in a weird way to get that to work. Now... I don't think that I can get away with doing... No. Okay, so they're actually a 5x5, five five, it looks like. 1, 2, 3, 4... Yeah, so they're 5x5, five five, not 3x3. Uh, three three. I actually thought they were 3x3. Three three. Um, but from here, what we can do... Do I want to do... Th eh. No, I'm going to have to do it either way. I was going to say, do I want to do three junctions? I mean, three, um, three of these guys or one junction, but they're going to end up coming out the same way. And then let's do... Do these have a back port? They don't. That's dumb. Well, that stinketh. All right. Uh, that changes things up a little bit because now I can't do that. Hmm. Oh! I'm a dum-dum. Why do I need conveyor ports at all? Why not just roll them this way and attach them directly to the cargo container? Or the conveyor, I mean. That works. 
Now, let's think about this here. I'm going to probably put the cockpit there, I'm thinking. And like I said, I know this is kind of a weird ship layout. Um, but I'm trying to do a, li a little bit quicker and more efficient rather than trying to, um, you know, do a bunch of make it look all pretty kind of thing. I'm kind of trying to make it work. Um, bu -bu 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 now, since we've got three conveyor ports here on the top, I'm going to add in at least one small reactor, eh, maybe two. And those will be the backup reactors. I like to put at least a backup reactor on the ships. Now we have to think of... I'm kind of probably going to do... See, the only bad part about this is the cockpit and the weapons are not concealed at all by the heavy armor. Which was kind of part of the point of doing heavy armor was so that it, like the vital stuff wouldn't get damaged. And with this kind of setup, it's more efficient, but it's also not going to be able to take many hits on the front. It's like, if I put a bunch of heavy armor on the back to cover up the thrusters and whatnot, well, yeah, then it works, but um, the important stuff isn't really concealed. So, this... Oh, I just realized the collision box goes way up. Hmm. That's not what I was hoping for. Where, how could I actually do this if I wanted to do... How far out would I have to go? What I'm thinking is if I covered up like all but the front window and I'm wondering how far out this would have to go before I could do that. Okay, and then it's at this point. Oh, wow! I was like, what's that up in the sky? It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's the scuttler. Um, anyways, moving on. So, the best I could do in terms of concealing this would be to take these two off and do ramps here, I think. I think that would be the only real way to do any kind of, like, um, curvature. And then I'd have to bring this down, like, out further front. That's, that's kind of what I'm seeing if I wanted to keep this kind of a shape and keep this nose, uh, but then cover up the actual cockpit for security reasons. That could work. I don't know. I never really tried to do it that way. Um... This is probably going to end up being a trial and error episode in terms of the design. I probably won't do too much more than scaffolding and then um, wait and kind of hear what you guys think about the design overall. Um, I'm a little concerned about how exposed all of the vital parts are and I probably should do more like put a conveyor tube going out on the sides and then cover that and then have the turrets out on the side. So it would make the ship bigger, bulkier, and overall have a bit more difficulty in terms of flying, but I think in the long run it would probably end up being a little bit better. I think in terms of like security, it would probably be able to take a few more hits before actually having an issue. Um, let's just see real quick where this would end up going. Uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't have these on the same hot bar somehow. Uh, actually, let's just go out too. We don't need to actually, because that would be the ramp and then the tip part. So let's just do, nope. Should be like this, I think. And then that's actually in line with this. Um, so that's a pretty long nose, not gonna lie, if I, if I did it that way. That would be one smooth angle going all the way up to the top, but that sits pretty far back kind of thing. So I'm not sure if all that's necessary or not. Again, let me know what you guys think. 
I'm gonna look for that lost block. There you are. Uh, so, there's that idea. That's one aspect of the ship that I'd like to figure out. Because then what I, was, what I was thinking is... Let's see. If I were to put a standard conveyor tube like this and then put this guy out here like so then what i was thinking is we could um either probably using the inverted corner type blocks um let's see which would sit along this edge and then you'd have the inverted and then you'd have the standard again so it kind of follows the same pattern. Alright, where am I at? And you'd probably go to about there, and then just go straight back with it. I think. Now the only issue with that is going to be that if this is the inverted corner, this should probably be a ramp or something to keep the... It's going to be a weird shape, is I guess my point. Um, it would give it a bit more of a plain kind of look. Like, you know, you could even then go back from here and put two large atmospheric thrusters on the side pods for, like, uh, VTOL-type hovering. Uh, which I like that idea, because we seem to get by okay with standard atmospheric thrusters um, on these little guys, but they have no real plating or weight to them other than their conveyors and what's in the storage containers. This is going to be made out of heavy armor, so it's going to be really heavy. So I like the idea of having two vertical large thrusters, because that should, in my limited experience in survival play, should be more than enough to keep it afloat even with the heavy armor and stuff if, if i'm incorrect on that assessment then definitely let me know but i'm thinking that should be more than enough um and now bear in mind if i were to do this this central area right about here so these three rows probably wouldn't be covered it would go around and then over but I'd like to kind of keep a little bit of a view window for the actual flight seat. Either that or we could put it uh, a camera somewhere, I suppose, um, so that you could actually see. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of like that idea. There's just a lot of room back here that isn't really being made use of. Though we could, we could keep it hollow, I guess, and cut down on some of the weight. Or add in, put in your gyroscopes or something, extra storage. I don't know. Um, I might need more than those small reactors, actually. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking if I did this pattern of then either continuing and go um, kind of like at this, or at this kind of an angle, off the back, make little wings, or round it off on the back, but somewhere like right in this area, and then in this area having two large vertical thrusters. Um, I probably don't need the downward thrusters in the atmosphere here, and I, I'm, I should have probably clarified this is going to be just an atmospheric ship. I don't plan on it being um, a, a traversable atmospherical... Atmosphere traversable? I don't... <laughs> It's not going to go into space. <laughs> it's not going to go into space. This is my point. Um, but yeah, we could do... How big are the the large... Ooh! They are large. Um, so is that 3x3? Three three? I'm thinking. Well, not vertically, but uh, this way it looks like it's about a 3x3. Three three. So... Let's see if I mounted this... I want it kind of like in this area over here. I might be able to get away with doing that, actually. And then putting one there. Why do those look different? Those look different to me. I don't think they actually are. That's so weird. They're not actually different, but they look different to me. They don't look like they placed in the same spot. 
whatever. Um, so something like that, and then we could... Let's see, what else? Left, right, upward, forward, and backward. So we could put the... Um, the reverse thrusters in line with these, but like down here and pointing this way, because I think that would keep them away from all of this stuff. And then the forward ones we could put like back in here or up above this, something like that. And then the side to sides we could have sticking out over here and then kind of wrap everything up in heavy armor. Might be an idea. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about all that in the comments. Um, but I think we're out of time for this episode, so we're going to wrap things up here. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.